showtime. Tommy Bartlett's showtime. Well, we're delighted to have the latest inductee into the Water Ski Hall of Fame, Tommy Bartlett here. Tommy, this must be a big thrill for you. A big thrill for me. The biggest thrill for me. Uh, I have a Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Broadcasting Association, and I uh, emceed the uh, medal award ceremonies for the Winter Olympics up in Calgary, and I've emceed the Calgary Stampede Stage Show after the Chuck Wagon races for 26 years. And had my own network TV shows and was a pilot for Northwest Airlines for many years. And truthfully, this is the biggest thrill of all. Well, our latest inductee into the Water Ski Hall of Fame, uh, Bill Barlow, I, I guess we could almost refer to you as the father of the Water Ski Hall of Fame. How, how'd you get involved in all of this, anyway? In the Hall of Fame? Well, of course, I was one of the founders of the American Water Ski Educational Foundation back 25 years ago. And uh, one of the things we put down in, in our application for tax exemption was a Hall of Fame and museum. We didn't really expect we'd ever get to that, or uh, at least not right away. And of course, it was another 15 years before we started the Hall of Fame. Leave it to an accountant to uh, start things for tax, tax purposes, right? Well, there's no question that's exactly what the foundation was formed for, was to allow contributions deductible for the UST. How did a guy from Oakland, California, where all there is is salt water around, get involved in, in water skiing? Well, there have been a few tournaments on salt water. As you know, over the years, we've had a few world tournaments on salt water. One of the all-time great water skiers and the latest inductee into the Water Ski Hall of Fame, Cindy Hutchison Todd. Cindy, how did it get started for you? Well, my father taught me how to ski when I was four years old. We skied um, at an open lake. It wasn't a structured water ski club or anything. And uh, he taught me by um, pull, uh, pulling me up between his legs on my skis. And his, he would be skiing with me between his legs. And I've been skiing ever since. Yeah, and don't tell me you used to joke with your friends about how someday you're going to be a world champion, right? Well, there was two of us in particular, me and Brian Bell used to talk, talk well, their parents, I think. <laughs> the parents used to say, Cindy and Brian are going to be on the world team together. And I, you know, we used to laugh about it. We didn't really have any real plans for that. When, when did you get real serious about it? Stuart McDonald III very impressive and congratulations to a very impressive person who has devoted almost his entire life to the world of water skiing. Well, at least up to now anyway, Will, and thank you very much. And particularly coming from you, know, because I know that you among many others, but you especially had a lot to do with it. I know that you nominated me and, and uh, you did this beautiful portrait as you have most of the others, and thank you. Enough of the Mutual Admiration Society here. <laughs> I've always been curious. I know you love to have your feet free. You don't like to wear shoes. What was the real reason that you adopted water skiing as your lifelong endeavor? Was it because you didn't have to wear shoes? Well, that had a lot to do with it, although they sometimes make me wear them. Like today, I've been, um, in, in, uh, been employed upon to uh, wear them. The 1992 American Water Ski Educational Foundation Hall of Fame, and our honoree is certainly a richly deserving one, Nancy Rideout Robertson, who among other things has been an outstanding world and national competitor and, and our brave and fearless leader for as president of the foundation. We'll get into that later. 
How did you start your skiing career? And as I recall, you were from Orlando then, now from Kansas City. Yeah, uh, we started skiing on Lake Conway in Orlando in 1951. Dad went out and bought a fishing boat, and the dealer threw in a pair of water skis. Well, that was the end of Dad's fishing, because there were four of us kids that had to ski. So by the time one was finished skiing, the next one had to ski. End of fishing, start of skiing. End of fishing, start of skiing. Banana George Blair, it is absolutely wonderful to have you inducted into the Hall of Fame. You, above all, have been a very good image for all of the water skiers in the country and the world. In fact, seven continents. George is barefooted on seven continents. What were those seven, George? Well, I don't know whether I can remember them, but uh, uh, we were uh, sitting uh, in my living room uh, uh, about uh, six years ago with my wife and my brother-in-law. And uh, uh, we were talking about where we had uh, barefooted and water skied. And he was uh, sitting there and he said, you know, you have uh, been uh, doing this on six continents. And I said, yes. I said, how many continents are there? And he said, well, there's seven. I said, well, which one did I miss? And he said, uh, the Antarctic. I said, oh. Congratulations, Leapin, Linda, Levin Good Giddens. You are one of the most outstanding jumpers of all time. How did you get started jumping? Well, I started off in Miami in 1961, and I had a real active water ski club, the Greater Miami Ski Club, and we had a real good junior program, and so I had a lot of competition there, so I started jumping then. A lot of good skiers have come out of the Miami Ski Club. How did you get, uh, how did you become associated with the group? Well, I was from Miami, and it was just a family sport, and that's how we started. Did your mother and father ski? Yes, they did competition, and so did my two sisters. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, how old were you when you started? I started skiing when I was five, and my first competition was here at Cypress Gardens when I was nine.